to speak. Mr Blackfoot. Indeed, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. But I think we had a demonstration there from the Conservative benches that members from Scotland should sit down and shut up, that we shouldn't be heard in this House. Well, I can say to the honourable gentleman, I can say to the honourable gentleman, there's a very, there's a very easy fix. There's a very easy fix to that. Let's have the Section 30 order. Let's have the referendum in Scottish independence, and we can say goodbye to you. Thank you and good night, Madam Deputy Speaker. The Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster does not care for the polling numbers that I referenced, and he does not care for devolution. He, after all, is the architect of this bill. Parliamentary etiquette. Parliamentary etiquette. My goodness. Devolution has been butchered, and I hear Conservative members talking about etiquette. What a lot of key. <laughs> Madam Deputy Speaker, the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster has set out his agenda. Scotland is to be dealt with. The Scottish Parliament is to have its wings clicked. Westminster is to take back control and wants to give itself spending powers over our devolved matters. My right honourable friends, you and the subject to Keith, and this idea that if honourable gentlemen and right honourable gentlemen and ladies on the other side want us to go, there's a very elegant and convenient solution that we could have this. And wouldn't, that, wouldn't you agree that that solution is right in front of them, Scottish independence, which is on the rise, and we'll be quite happily out of this place? My honourable friend is right, and I think the government benches know that a referendum is coming. We should really just get on with it. This bill, after all, is giving Westminster direct spending control in Scotland in devolved areas, in health in education, in housing, in transport. And the people of Scotland know from long and bitter experience the Tories can't be trusted to spend money in Scotland. The Tories will look after their own interests. They will never support Scotland's interests, as tonight just demonstrates. The passing of this bill gives the Tories free reign to bypass Scotland's Parliament and bypass the democratic priorities of the Scottish people. Madam Deputy Speaker, that democratic principle, the right to choose our own form of governance, comes to the very heart of what is at stake if the Tories force this legislation through tonight. They can try denying it all they like, but it's the Tories themselves who are breaking the constitutional settlements that have democratically supported across these islands. This legislation rips apart Scotland's claim of rights. It's enshrined the sovereign right of the Scottish people to determine the form of government best suited to their needs. That claim of right was debated on an SNP motion in the last Parliament and was passed without objection. It is a long-held principle that Scotland's sovereignty in Scotland rests with the people of Scotland and not with Westminster. That historic right has its roots in the declaration of our growth and formed the basis of the determination in the case of McCormick versus the Crown by Lord Cooper when as Lord President of the Court of Session he gave his opinion that said that the principle of unlimited sovereignty of Parliament is a distinctly English principle that has no counterpart in Scottish constitutional law. That principle of the sovereignty of the people of Scotland is under attack with this bill. Would the this... honourable gentleman give way? Oh, happy to give way. Would the honourable gentleman agree with me that there are plenty of reasons to oppose this legislation that don't necessarily involve the case for Scottish independence? <laughs> well, I mean, the fact is that what is happening is a consequence of the attack on Scotland's Parliament and the powers of our Parliament that people in Scotland are making that determination that they wish our country to be independent and they wish our country to become independent as soon as possible. This bill undermines the settled will of the people of Scotland who voted in a referendum on the basis of our Parliament having control over spending and devolved matters. It is that fundamental, it is that serious that is happening right now. This is a defining moment. The UK Government are attempting to block the sovereign right of the Scottish people to decide Scotland's future. Madam Deputy Speaker. It's great to hear him uh, remind the House that the principle of the sovereignty of Parliament is a purely English uh, doctrine. Does he agree with me that in seeking to interfere with the, su with the inherent uh, supervisory jurisdiction of the court session, uh, this bill also potentially uh, breaches Article 19 of the Treaty of Union between Scotland and England? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It may well be right that that is the case. My, my learned friend has much experience of, of these matters, but I would simply say that this House 
if it passes this bill tonight, really just does not seem to care about the issue of law and treaties. Giving way, I feel like a, a Pez dispenser of clarification on the Good Friday Agreement. But in, in the course of discussing um, sovereignty, would the members opposite uh, agree, and would the member agree that in fact it's not an ornament in the shelf, but the Good Friday Agreement, being endorsed by the people of Ireland, North and South, is in fact sovereign uh, as regards Northern Ireland? And would the member further agree with me that uh, not only does this uh, uh, Bill protect the Good Friday Agreement. It offends each of its strands, and it offends its principles of democratic process, respect for differences, and the rule of law. Absolutely, I fundamentally agree with uh, my honourable friend, and we all look on with alarm at what could happen if the Good Friday Agreement is disrespected. And we give every good wish to our friends in the island of Ireland that the maintenance of peace is maintained. But there is no question that this government is playing with fire. Madam Deputy Speaker, time is short, so I must now move on. <laughs> it is pretty ironic that at the very same moment that the Tories are robbing the Scottish people of their sovereign rights, those behind this power grab are using the very same arguments on sovereignty to impose their extreme Brexit agenda. In February, the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster lectured us, and I quote, the experience of history tells us that the countries with the maximum amount of control over their own destinies are the best equipped to succeed economically and indeed to secure a greater degree of equity for all their citizens. If the Minister holds this to be true, then it ought to be true for Scotland. Yeah, yeah. And yet, through this very bill, the UK Government are trying to rob those rights and those powers from Scotland's democratically elected Parliament. The best that can be said for this UK Government is that they at least wear their hypocrisy on their sleeves. When it comes to sovereignty, I have been looking back at what the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster had said over the years. He said on the 14th of October 2012, when talking about the EU, give us back our sovereignty or we will walk out. If he thinks this matter is so crucial, why is he leading his government to attack the Scottish Parliament? Why is he disregarding our sovereignty in Scotland? Madam Deputy Speaker, we will push our amendment tonight to defend democracy to defend Scotland's interests, to defend this barefaced attack on our Parliament's powers. We know that the vast majority of Scotland's MPs and the Scottish public will be with us. What of the six Scottish Tories, though? Will they stand up for Scotland? Will they stand up for our Parliament? Tonight is their chance to join with us, to reject this power grab, to reject Westminster trampling over the devolution settlement, yeah, yeah, yeah. to respect that the Scottish Parliament should determine spending on devolved matters. A failure to join with us will show that the so-called Scottish Tories have reverted to type, reverted to what they have traditionally been, hostile to devolution. Yeah, Madam Deputy Speaker, Scottish. let me conclude by putting this in context. Over the last number of years, Scotland's people have watched on as Westminster ignored our views on Brexit, launched power grab after power grab and undermined our democratic rights. This legislation is the last straw. It leaves us with only one option and only one choice. A growing and consistent majority of our people have now come to the same conclusion. They know that the only way to defend Scotland's parliaments and powers is through independence. Madam Deputy Speaker, the words of Charles Stuart Parnell, who used to sit just two rows back here, still ring true. Tonight I direct these words to the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, and I will do this two lines in Gaelic and then give an English translation. Hanai and Batshu. Madam Deputy Speaker, no man has the right to fix the boundary to the march of a nation. No man has the right to say to his country, thus far thou shalt go and no further. <laughs>